people don't usually wake up one morning and say, today I think I'll have an encounter with God. Usually it happens either because we're crying out in a desperate situation or we encounter him unexpectedly in our life. My guest today had an encounter of the unexpected sort and it's totally transformed his life. Simon Toyan, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for asking me. So you are a policeman in the greater Toronto area right. and you've seen a lot over to say, yes. more than 30 years. That's right, yeah. Tell me about the kind of impact that has on you when you've been doing that kind of work for so long. Well, it can make you very cynical and very jaded. Um, you see people at the worst uh, every day, several times a day. And you're a human being who just happens to wear a uniform. So you, uh, you develop a self-defense mechanism. Um, I call it the, the cop scab. So you have like a game face. And uh, you, because you deal with so many different things that uh, you get lied to. I, I always say we get lied to for a living, and that makes a difference. So you end up, uh, quite frankly, nine times out of ten, not believing a word you hear from anybody. Wow. Which makes you very hard and cynical and gives you a horrible view of the world. Um, and that's just part of the job that you see every day. Now, not too long ago, you were finding yourself in not a good situation for your mental health. Tell me about what that's was right. happening in your life. Well, at the time, um, I, I was uh, a, a beat cop, uh, if you like, uh, front line, um, just a normal day shift, and uh, uh, a very significant incident happened that I uh, tried to help with. Um, but after, like you said, after 30 years of being a police officer, I think that was the final uh, straw that broke the camel's back, if you like, and uh, resulted in a mental injury for myself, which means that, which meant that I. Uh, I was off work for nearly a year, and I've only just returned to work. So now PTSI, so PTSD is what we're used to hearing, right. post-traumatic stress disorder. Right. But PTSI is post-traumatic stress injury. What That's is right. the difference? Well, it's, it sounds like semantics, but it's not really. Uh, PTSD is, a, is the catch word for it. Um, but it, it's seen as a, as a disorder, which would suggest it, you've always had it, which is not the case. Uh, post-traumatic stress injuries are exactly that. They're a brain injury. That, uh, that you suffer through a traumatic uh, event. And so it more accurately describes the situation. So you're, I wanna go back a couple years here because you were in a place of burnout in your life from, from what you had been doing for a living. That's right. You were definitely not looking for God. Nope. So what happened because something's changed with you? Okay, so this is where we go down the road of God incidences, right? Not coincidences. So I was living in Oakville uh, a friend said, oh, they're selling houses in Burlington that are really good and really cheap. So it didn't make a lot of sense to move five miles down the road, but whatever. So we bought a house in Burlington. Uh, it's a new subdivision. I went for a, a, a run and they were building a church. I thought, well, that's nice. And then I came back a few days later and the sign went up and it was for an Anglican church. And well, it's my gang. So that's nice. As a child, as a child you went to uh, an Very Anglican much so. I was, I was a a very old term, I was an acolyte, it was high Anglican. So I was an acolyte and smells and bells and all the good things, right? <laughs> um, but I'd obviously through the military and the police, I'd moved away from that um, to a certain extent. Still had the deep rooted belief, but didn't acknowledge it. Um, so uh, I can remember distinctly on a Saturday, I just, uh, I, sat the, you know, I sat on the sofa and said to the wife, you know what, I'm gonna check that church out tomorrow. And she was like, okay but don't expect me to go well she gave me the the cocker spaniel thing at first and then she said well don't expect me to go with you and now she goes with me every sunday and we we lead our own small group at home anyway so i i went and walked into this building and uh you know met, met the pastor there peter he was really nice and like a good anglican i sat at the back because i, I was going to check this out i knew better than this well, this is this god stuff and I can only, uh, what my friend Ray has described as I had a Holy Ghost moment. Completely broke down. I mean, sobs. Um, to the extent that everybody was craning around in their pew like, what is this guy doing? Um, and you were kind of going, what's going on with me? Very much so. It, was kind of, it wasn't out of body, but I was aware of it. And I, being the, being the <laughs> cynic that I thought and the experienced guy I thought I was, I thought, well, okay, I'm finally having a nervous breakdown. I've worked hard enough for it. And this is it. Um, but then uh, it took, and I've been going ever since. So you had something happen that day. Someone came up and put their hand on your shoulder. Tell me about that. Oh, yeah. That was, that was really, I don't want to use the word weird, but it was weird. <laughs> so there's me um, on my own. I'm a, I'm a blubbery mess, you know, um, and I'm full-on blubbery mess. It wasn't pretty. 
and I felt a hand on my shoulder and this male voice saying, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, over and over and over again. And this actually, I don't know if it made me worse or better, but it just racked up the experience. So I was wailing away and, um, uh, and then I recovered and then he gave me a pocket handkerchief, which I've still got. And he, he went, right? I, I looked around, there was no one there. So we went for fellowship afterwards, tea and biscuits, which is all very good which I like being English. And uh, <laughs> I was asking the, the, the people that I met that day who were amazing and continue to be amazing. Who was the guy st stood next to me? And one woman in particular, um, Kathy, she, uh, she looked at me all the way through and she said, there was no one there. There was no one stood next to you. And I was like, come on. And no, she didn't see anybody. Um, so, woo, goosebumps, right? Can't explain it to this day. Not at all. I'm just grateful. What, what happened afterwards? Did something change in you? Yeah, very much so. Um, my attitude towards people. Uh, it changed from being, um, you know, you're out to, to get something from me, um, what do you want, all an ulterior motive, to again, and praise God for this, he's like, how can I help this guy? Um, and oddly enough, and thankfully my boss didn't pick up on, and hopefully he's not watching this, is my tickets went down because I'm a traffic cop, so we're kind of measured in how many tickets we write. But I, this sounds really weird, uh, but on several occasions, I'd, I'd stop somebody for, a, for an infraction, not a big deal, and I'd look at them and say, uh, you're a believer, right? And they'd get this, because it's the last thing you expect from this stormtrooper that stops you, right? <laughs> and I ended up praying with them. Wow. Uh, and, 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 and that was it, and have a good day, and off you go, point out, still do my job, point out what they've done wrong and what they should do to fix it, but. I'd done enough, and they went away, hopefully with, a, with a, a positive outcome, which where I work is very rare. So you, you basically had been at the point before this where you didn't believe what anyone said. You, nope. were, you were done even trying to help people, kind of yep. like, um, everyone was kind of not an enemy, but definitely not a friend. That's right. To now, where, now where does your motivation come from? Uh, trying to help people, the, the polar opposite, um, even to the point of being, uh, I think, being called to ministry which two, year, two or three years ago would be like, yeah, right, whatever. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great feeling um, to actually get that will to, to literally protect and serve back again. I, I, I hate that phrase, he has a plan for me. It, it seems a bit catch-all, but I'm sure he has a purpose for me now. Uh, he always did. He always did, right? Uh, I just couldn't see it, but I'm sure he has a purpose now. What it is, I don't know. I'm trusting him to point that out. It's kind of exciting and scary, but I'm looking forward to it.